are not many times in our lives when we witness things being born. I remember, like it was yesterday, the birthdays of my own children, the moments that they first drew breath. Pretty amazing. At the time, I tried to have the presence of mind to stop and soak in the significance of those moments. But I've also attended groundbreaking ceremonies and ribbon cuttings and weddings and too many graduation ceremonies to mention. I've been there when someone was horribly injured in an accident, takes their first steps in rehab. There's something about walking again, even if it's with a lot of help and there are still miles to go toward a full recovery. It can feel like starting a brand new life. And I've been privileged enough to be present on many occasions when someone has taken their final breath of this life before they draw in their first breath of the life to come. All those moments are transitions from one way of being to another, an ending of one kind of life, and the start of something new. Now, most transitions, even major ones, we don't notice at all because they're more subtle, like the changing of seasons. I suspect that may be why it's hard for so many people to take the climate crisis seriously. Human-caused climate change has been going on ever since the Industrial Revolution kicked off well over 200 years ago. It's only now that the accumulation of the damage we've done has reached a point on an exponential curve that we're just starting to take it seriously. The problem has been that curve was not always so evident and it's been so gradual in the lifetime of most of us that it's been hard to see, and for many, it's been hard to believe. It's easier to recognize transitions when they're a lot more sudden. The COVID pandemic has presented all of humanity with the sobering reminder that the natural world does not guarantee our survival. It's been a reminder that human life is fragile and that the very thing that we're prone to do as a species, to gather in groups and form associations and societies, that can also be the very thing that puts us most at risk because we're social animals. We're wired to be with each other, to help each other, to rely on each other, and to love each other in person. So one of the harshest realities of COVID has been the sudden transition away from all of those previously safe assumptions about how we just function as social human beings. And that can make us frustrated, impatient, and angry. Now, like a lot of you, I've read a great deal about COVID and the spread of infectious disease and about the history of pandemics and plagues and how societies have responded to them, some more successfully than others. I've also witnessed the personal toll this virus has taken. We all know someone who's contracted COVID and who's been very scared. We all know people who've been very ill and we all know someone who's died. So it's not some abstract thing that happens to people somewhere else. It's right here. So I've tried to wrap my mind around it. And as the pastor of a church, I have felt responsible not only for myself and my own family, but for anyone who's been part of this church that I lead. And more than that, I have felt responsible for people I don't know personally. Because if a vaccine or any other mitigation technique exists that might help prevent me from spreading this virus unknowingly to someone who might die because I did not get vaccinated, then that's not a really big decision to make. I am going to get vaccinated, and I have, and I will continue to get vaccinated as new vaccines are developed, which they inevitably will because it's just the nature of viruses to change. So bring on the vaccines. Now that doesn't make me heroic. Just plain old, boringly grown-up responsible. Now, it's just an analogy, but I also don't go around tossing loaded guns into crowds of innocent toddlers and say, here, kids, have fun. Good luck on who survives. We just don't do that kind of thing. It's just common sense that we care enough about each other to not cause them harm. It's an ethical and moral responsibility that requires us to set aside any discomfort we may have for the good of others. And that's another transition we're all going through. We, you know, we all value our personal freedom, but if you season that with a dash of believing that government is already too controlling and at a pinch of 
suspicion about scientists and big pharma and technology and super rich people who want to implant us with microchips and stir that up in the illogical social media conspiracy saucepan with the heat turned on full boil, then sure, you might feel very strongly that your personal freedom is being stripped away if you get vaccinated. I get that. Now, I disagree with it, but I get it. We've always lived with a social and political tension between our liberty on the one hand and on the other, our responsibility to each other that looks beyond our own needs for the good of the whole. Now, I don't see that tension going away anytime soon, but I do see a transition occurring just the same, a greater awareness and awakening to what I believe is the truth that we are all far more connected and much more dependent on each other than we ever realized. And that, if nothing else, should be our COVID lesson number one. It's still very true that in our culture we live, we love the ideal of the rugged individualist. We make idols out of entrepreneurs and entertainers and athletes who rise to the top. We're fascinated by them, those individuals. We imagine ourselves as them. We can live vicariously through them. So we're far less interested in the teams that support them and the culture of organ organizations they work with, the careful cultivation of their person, public persona, and the entire crew of hundreds of very talented people that are required to produce a movie or TV show. We only really care about the star. But I still see a shift, a transition, an awakening to the knowledge that I am only truly strong and healthy and whole and happy when my team and my crew and my network, made up of my neighbors and my community and my world, are also strong, healthy, whole, and happy. Now, the pandemic has been and continues to be a terrible, sad, and frightening thing. It's not over yet by a long shot. And there's much more about it that is beyond our control. But what we can absolutely control is how we respond to it. We can learn so much from this terrible experience. It presents us with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to shape a new set of lenses through which we see and we understand our relationships with each other in a way that focuses on the truth that we are stronger, healthier, more complete, and happier when we shift our focus away from what about me to what can I do for you. That's why even while we're still in the thick of variants and seesawing between how much we need the mandate and mask up and should we start requiring vaccinations and even in the midst of all of our endless arguing about all that stuff, you and I have a special job to do. We can be among the people everywhere who are leading the charge into a new way of understanding and living out the truth that we all belong to each other, that we're all responsible for each other because God created us that way. The psalmist once wrote about God delivering her back into the land of the living, and I love that phrase, land of the living, because where she had been before did not feel much like living. It was as if she was down in the pits, in the sewers, where people tossed their trash. But she was brought out of the pits, and God delivered her for her soul from death, her eyes from tears, her feet from stumbling. It was just like being reborn. Now, at this distance, we, act, we have no idea what she was actually going through. All of her language is poetic. It's symbolic of some deep trauma that we'll never know, but what she's feeling is something we all know, something we've all been through, something we can't even see the end of yet. We have many miles to go. But what we have to look forward to is the land of the living, truly living, living less for ourselves and more for the sake of each other, to be responsible to and for each other, living where all of God's children can have life abundantly, stronger, healthier, more complete, and happier. Living into a new reality of how we can best respond to all that's happened during this remarkable moment in time. We may have miles yet to go, but we have the power and the help of God's Spirit and the golden opportunity to rethink, reshape, transition, and rebuild our